Good morning, and a very warm welcome to Morning Prayer from St Mark's Church for Tuesday, the 19th of May. I'm flying solo this morning as Norma, who usually does the service with me, is unwell with what we hope is just an infected throat. Please do bear her in your prayers at the moment. Let's have a moment of quiet to be still. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, Be still, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Our reading today starts a new series in the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 1, beginning to read at verse 1. The beginning of the Gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the desert, Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. And so John came, baptising in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I was on my morning run this morning, uh, near the Millfield area, I turned down a street, and as I ran down it, a little side street, uh, I saw a man huddled and passed out amidst piles of, of rubbish bags um, and a couple of discarded beer cans, completely drunk and um, not responding to anything. Fortunately, as I continued my run, I passed a police car and was able to... Uh, let them know about it and uh, ask them to keep an eye on him. Although they were rather distracted, having just apprehended somebody who had been, I think, trying to break into a house. It was a bit of a sad reminder of the state of our world in many places. Drunkenness, crime, violence. And yet that's been the story of humanity, as long as we can remember. 
I said yesterday that Proverbs and all its wisdom brings us to the point of realising that good advice is not enough. We need good news. We need help from outside because we know, even when we know what is the right thing to do, we as human beings fail to do it. We need someone to step in and change us because the heart of the human problem is the problem of our human hearts. And so what is good news for our world? We hear a lot uh, these days of depressing news uh, on the television or uh, the internet or the newspaper. What is some good news that will truly be good news? What will be good news for those who are sick? For those who are scared and facing the possibility of death? Or worried for family and loved ones? What will be good news for those lonely and stuck indoors? Those who've lost their jobs, those who are drunk, those who are harassed and busy trying to keep law and order. What will be good news for them? Well, 2,000 years ago, in a world far, far darker than our own, a young man named John Mark sat down to write a book. It was a world ruled with an iron fist by the Roman Empire, where dissent or disagreement was punished with torture and death, and barbarians howled at the gates. A world of vast economic and social inequality, where the rich took advantage of the poor and boasted of it, and the third of the population lived as slaves, with no legal rights. A world where most people were lucky to make 40 or 50 years old. A world ravaged by plagues that made Covid-19 look mild. A world where John Mark and the people who believed what he believed faced death by torture on a regular basis for their faith. It was a dark world. And yet in that dark world he sat down and wrote a book and he called it a gospel. Verse 1, the beginning of the gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Gospel is an old, a very old English word meaning good news. Good spell, literally. Good message. And it's a pretty good translation for the, the Greek word, if you'll pardon a little bit of Greek, that John uses here, euangelion, which means good message or good news. Mark called this book the good news because he believed that in that dark world there was good news. 2,000 years later, our world has seen a lot of its darkness healed and a lot of it still remains. We still need that good news. There's a lot yet to be done. The world has changed, but it has a lot further to go. And the secret of that change, I believe, is in the message of this book, this good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We're used to seeing Jesus Christ put together as if it's a first name and a surname. But of course, Christ is a title. It means anointed one. So, Jesus the anointed one. And son of God, again, is a term we're used to hearing thrown around. In the ancient world, lots of kings claimed to be the son of a god, or descended from the gods. The, uh, the Jewish people, um, amongst whom this book is set and of whom Jesus was one, were a little bit more cautious about that sort of language. Although even they would sometimes refer to their king as God's son. So Son of God is a royal title. And together that very first sentence of, of Mark's Gospel could almost be rendered announcing God's King, Jesus the Anointed One. Um, gospel or good news could mean just that, uh, a piece of good news, a good message. But it was also the word used to announce the birth of a new Roman Emperor. It meant that a new ruler had come. And Christ uh, anointed one, Messiah, was God's promised ruler to save the world. So this very first verse of the Gospel is saying, Good news, everybody. The King has come. God's King, not just any old King. And verses 2 and 3 add a, a little bit more, another piece of the puzzle. I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the desert, Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. 
I don't know if you remember, it was a little while ago now, but the very first of these morning prayer reflections I did was on that verse from Isaiah 40. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord. It was a message, a promise then to God's people that one day, after all the judgment, after all the defeat and exile and failure, things would change because God was going to come. It was a promise made 500 years before Jesus, and for 500 years God's people waited for that promise to come true, that God would come and change everything. And nothing changed. Generations passed and nothing changed. And Mark is telling us, now things have changed. Now the promise is being kept. Now God has come. He has drawn near. In Jesus the Christ, the Anointed One, the Son of God. God has drawn near in his King, his Rescuer, his Messenger. And that is the first piece of good news that we're going to hear from Mark's Gospel. God has anointed a King. God has appointed a Saviour of the world. And in him God has drawn near to change everything. Two things for us to remember and take away from that. First, Jesus came as a king. We're perhaps a little too used to the image of Jesus as uh, the gentle wanderer in Palestine who always seems to be depicted with long hair that's seen a lot of conditioner, um, healing people and welcoming small children, and all of that's true. Or maybe we're used to it, the idea of him as, as our friend in heaven, and that's true too. But let's not lose sight of this truth, that he came as king, God's king, God's emperor for the world. And one day every knee will bow before him. It is great that we can come to him without fear, with intimacy and with love. Let's come with respect as well, and let's recognise that his call on our lives is the call of a king. It's not a friend's invitation to go for a walk or to come for drinks. It's the trumpet of the emperor summoning us. He is a king, not just a baby born in a manger, not just a wonderful friend, not just a healer, a teacher, a carpenter. He is a king in the end. And the coming of that king is good news because it means God is intervening. And I think that's the second thing to take away. But God does not sit outside the world he has made watching it with polite interest. God breaks in. God can break in and come near and act and change everything. He did 2,000 years ago with his long-awaited coming. And it's no coincidence that since then, little by little, the world has become a brighter place. God can break into the world and he can break into our lives and change our lives. Many of us will have a story of how he has done just that. God can break into our world, he can break into our lives and he can break into our hearts. The hearts that Proverbs made very clear to us were not as pure or as righteous or as wise as we would like. God can break into our hearts and change them too. He does it in his anointed king, the Messiah. Jesus, his son. That is good news. It's good news for the drunk passed out on a Peterborough street. The king who comes can break the chains of addiction. It's good news for the police struggling to maintain order and busy and hassled. There is a king who holds this world in his hands. He is in control. It's good news for those who are sick or scared. God rules. He won't let this world go to hell in a handbasket. It's good news for us as we try and sometimes fail to live wise and virtuous lives. Because he is breaking into us too, to change us and to make all things new. The king is here. God is breaking in. And that is good news. Amen.
our prayers this morning, there's going to be a space for, um, for you to pray quietly, whatever particular prayers are on your heart. So I will introduce a topic for us to pray for, and then there will be a pause um, and an invitation to just bring before God in your own hearts um, what you would like to ask him to do for that topic. And then I will say, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So let us pray. Lord, for our world, which is your world, riven by fear and blame and uncertainty, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, for our nation, with its debates and its uncertainty about ending lockdown, its fears and hopes for the future, all that is good in it and all that needs changing, in faith we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are ill, all who are facing the prospect of death, all who are afraid for them. We pray with compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have lost loved ones, those who grieve, those who mourn. Be near them, we pray. In your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who have lost jobs and face an uncertain future, all who are alone, all who are afraid, in hope we pray. In your mercy, hear our prayer. For all others known to us who are in any need at this time, naming them in the quietness of our hearts, remembering to Norma in her illness. Lord, we pray. in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we pray for our own hearts and lives, that God might break in, that Christ might come to us as King and Lord, to rule, change and renew our lives, our hearts and our world. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Collect. <clears throat> God, our Redeemer.
Redeemer. You have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as by his death he recalled us to life, so by his continual presence in us he may raise us to eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with your mighty power. Grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all we do may be according to your will, so that we do always what is righteous in your sight, O God, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>